Let's discuss another Stumacher theory. A certain rule! Push the laws and you end up dead. This is the moment when the supposedly dead killer comes back to life. Not in my movie. Surprise, Sydney. He's gone mad! We all go a little mad sometimes. A very simple formula! You wanna play psycho killer? Everybody's a suspect! No, please don't kill me, Mr. Ghostface. I wanna be in the sequel. I'll be right back! Okay, I think it's gonna go something like this. I'm Pamela, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna discuss another Stumacher theory. If you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, then you might have heard about this one already. But if you're new here, then this might be brand new for you. But either way, when I talked about this, this was in my 50 stew clues video, which is a very long video and sometimes things can get lost in a long, extensive, detailed video like that. So I wanted to make a separate video just for this specific topic so we can talk about it down in the comments. So let's talk about the Scream 6 shrine. You guys know the shrine in Scream 6 was filled with all kinds of evidence from past crimes, items from the past Scream movies. They had some of the outfits from past characters, some of the old weapons, all of the ghost face costumes, other random little things like a happy birthday Roman sign, one of the pieces from the play that Sydney did in Scream 2, the rope from Casey Becker's house, all different kinds of things. And something else that they had in the shrine was all these different drawings. Drawings of either past crime scenes or past characters. There's a drawing of Casey Becker, a drawing of Jennifer Jolie. And we are made to believe that this is Richie who drew these. You know, Richie was building this shrine and his dad, Detective Bailey, helped him build it. He got some of this stuff from evidence lockers and they spent years building the shrine. So it's like implied that Richie is the one who drew these drawings. But there is something that makes me question this. Look at this drawing of Principal Hembry. You know, he's the principal from the first movie. Notice how the drawing shows the scene of him lying dead on the floor after he was killed in the first movie. He gets killed in his office. The drawing also shows him hanging from the goalpost, which is where his body would have been found. Because remember, Billy and Stu moved his body. And later on at the party, Randy gets a phone call, which I assume is from Stu because he had just left the room and he wanted to get everyone else to leave the party. But Randy receives a phone call saying, Principal Hembry was found hanging from the goalpost. So his body was moved. So I ask you this, how would Richie have known what the original crime scene looked like of Principal Hembry laying on the floor of his office? He wouldn't have known. Only someone who was there and saw it would know what that looked like. Richie was clearly not there. So that brings me to Stu Mocker. Now you guys obviously know I think Stu Mocker is alive and will return in Scream 7. We talk about it a bunch here on my channel. I'm a full on believer. There's no doubt in my mind that Stu is alive. And I also believe that Stu is the one who killed Principal Hembry. I know there is some debate on that, the fandom is very divided. A lot of people think it was Billy who killed Principal Hembry. Now, of course, we can't really know for sure, but I do believe that that was Stu because we see him head back towards the school. After Sydney and Tatum leave school and they're walking home, Stu joins them. The three of them briefly talk outside where Stu invites them to his party. And then we see Stu head back towards the school. So in my mind, that has always been Stu who killed Principal Hembry. So that means Stu would absolutely know what that original crime scene looked like. If he was there when Hembry was dead on the office floor, Stu is the only one who would know what that looks like. Because Stu is probably the only person who saw Hembry laying on the floor before they moved his body to the goalpost. Even if Billy was the one who killed Hembry, Stu definitely helped him move the body. That's definitely a two-person job. 
to not only move the body, but string it up on the goalpost. So either way, Stu saw what that original crime scene looked like, and he's the only person alive to know what it looked like. Like I said, Richie was not there. If Richie is the same age as Sam, then he wasn't even born yet, so of course he wasn't there. And it's not like there's photos of the crime scene that Bailey could have given Richie and Richie just sketched from those. There were no photos of that crime scene because like I said, his body was moved. Police did not find Principal Hembry laying on the floor like that. There was no evidence of that anywhere for Richie to sketch from the photo. Now, not only do I think that Stu is alive, but I do think that he's been kind of working in the shadows of the last two films. I think Richie and Amber were members of his cult. If you're new here, my theory is that Stu Mocker is leading a cult of ghost faces, recruiting these teenagers, young adults, to be in his ghost face cult. There's plenty of evidence that points towards this that we're not going to get into in this video, but I will link some of those videos down below. If you have not seen them yet and you want to hear about some of the cult clues, you can also just check out my full Stu Mocker playlist. There are tons of videos in there. So just a couple of the clues that point towards Richie and Amber being in Stu's cult. They met online. They met on a message board where I think Stu is recruiting these people for his cult. Amber even says these lines of dialogue that scream cult to me. She said, I just wanted to be a part of something. I was radicalized. I mean, come on, radicalized like she was pressured to be in this cult is what she was getting at. Peer pressure. I'm far too sensitive. So I definitely think Richie was a part of Stu's cult. So Stu was kind of pulling the strings in Scream 5. As the leader of the cult, he kind of gave them a plan and rules to follow. Same goes for Scream 6. I also think Jason and Greg were in Stu's cult because it's obvious that they knew Richie. They wanted to finish Richie's movie. And I mean, they're from Atlanta, so I definitely think they all met on the same message board where Stu is recruiting people. But so getting back to the photo of Principal Hembry. Stu is the only one who knows what that looked like. There was no photo evidence of that scene. His body was moved. So either Stu drew this himself or he was able to give like a detailed description to Richie so that Richie could draw it. Who knows, maybe all these years that Stu's been in hiding, he <laughs> has been taking up some hobbies, got really good at drawing, and he drew these himself. Or like I said, he gave a detailed description to Richie. Either way, there is no doubt in my mind that Stu is the only one who knew what this looked like. So that is just one of many clues that point towards Stu Mocker still being alive. Like I said, I did a video many months ago called 50 stew clues so if you have not seen that one yet definitely check it out there are a lot of good clues in there and honestly 50 isn't even all of them i have discovered way more clues since then so maybe i'll have to do a part two to that video i don't know but definitely check it out let me know what you guys think leave a comment down below are you a stew believer do you think stew mocker is still alive and will return in scream 7 what do you think about the clue that I gave you guys today in this video? Thanks so much for tuning in. Please give this video a like if you're excited for Scream 7. Also, please turn on the notification bell for my channel. Make sure you turn on all notifications so that you don't miss out on any of my future posts or Scream 7 updates. We are due for a Scream 7 update soon, so you won't want to miss it. I imagine we're going to get some more cast announcements soon. It's been a while. You also won't want to miss out on future Scream theories. Please also go subscribe to my second YouTube channel. And please also consider becoming a channel member here on my main channel. You'll get access to content that is only available for my channel members, as well as these fun little emojis. I have a Ghostface one, Billy Loomis, Sydney Prescott, of course, Stu Mocker. 
and you'll be able to use these stickers in comments on my videos or in the live chat during my live streams. The link to become an exclusive channel member will be down in the description or you can find the join button on my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll be right back. back.